With the arms out and the casting certainly successful enough for us, we move on to the body of the king. This one is much bigger, of course, with many more pieces to its mother mold, but the procedure is largely going to be the same. You'll notice that I have packing foam next to me on the table, this big white piece of foam. This is because I don't want the silicone or the casting laying directly on my hard table, which is by now filled with sharp resin residue and a whole bunch of other mess. The model mold is tough enough to the point of me not having to worry about anything other than the apocalypse, but the casting and the silicone can get damaged if they are laying on a nasty surface. The back half comes off really easy. Loosening the screws of the two model mold halves is enough for it to come off. This means doing two pieces for the back half of the mold was probably a touch overkill, but I'd rather have the issue of the piece coming apart too easy compared to the opposite happening. I'll leave the silicone skin on the casting for now until I get the front half of the model mold off as well. This is not strictly necessary, there's no real reason behind this, but I like to reveal the whole piece at once, not just to get to see the back and then have to work really hard to get the front off. It's also a little bit more dramatic, I think, for you guys to see the silicone come off together. So we're doing it that way this time. The front half of the mold consists of a lot of mother mold pieces, probably around 8 to 10. So let me get the mother mold off a bit easier, get the cast ready for the molding from the silicone and avoid laying the back half of the silicone on the dirty table as we just discussed. I'll lift the mold upright on top of the packing foam and have it sit upright. You want to be a little bit careful with the bottom of the cast right now because there is a lot of weight it has to carry since the front half of the model mold is still on the piece. Since the back half is off, the entire back half of the base is free and the casting inside, if you lean it on that back edge, has to carry the weight of the model mold and the casting. I don't want to take any chances at this point, so even though the hydro resting casting is going to be very strong, I work thinking that it's not as strong as it actually is. The bottom of the casting is important to me because it is the thing that registers to the flat bottom of the silicone, which means it's more or less level with the floor or any base I might put the piece on. Should I break some of it off, it might turn out to be more difficult than necessary to make the piece sitting level on a base. I'd like the original configuration the way it was sitting on the sculpting stand when I sculpted it, to be the way that the bottom of the piece register to the ground once cast as well. There is a ton of bolts to unscrew from the front half of the model mold. All of these are unscrewed and then put back together so I know what pieces for each bolt go back together. I've learned the hard way that not all bolts come back together the way you think that they should. This piece also has a lot of custom cut bolts, custom cut in terms of length, and also some custom cut washers with half a corner ground off, for example, to make them fit. So making sure the puzzle comes back together again means staying organized while demolding. Each piece of the model mold will, once removed, be laid out on the floor in the correct orientation to each other kind of like an exploded view of the mold in a way, and each bolt with its washers and wing nut will be placed with the piece it belongs to on the floor. This makes reassembly much faster and easier, and I want to reassemble the mother mold as you know, since silicone laying on the floor while I reassemble the mother mold is not a good idea. To release the mother mold pieces from the silicone, I use the help of a light tap of the hammer and a chisel or a screwdriver. When the piece is opened the first time around, when the mold is fresh and the clay is still inside, a chisel really makes a difference since it's sharp and can cut a little bit better through the mold than the screwdriver. Right now, however, after several castings have been made and the piece has, the mold rather, has been disassembled multiple times, the screwdriver is going to do just fine. Some pieces come off easier than others and the entire piece is designed so that certain pieces come off first. There is an order to how this model mold comes apart. 
Some of the pieces are a little tricky, and I've modified these pieces since the last time I opened this mold, but one of them is still a little bit tricky. I should probably modify it a bit more, grind off some pieces here and there, and also use my own suggestion of vaselining the back of the mold piece so it will slip off a little bit easier. You can see that when this last piece comes off, it breaks the arm a little bit. This is a slightly failed mold design on my part, but it's not going to be fatal. The part that breaks, and this part has broken every time I've cast this piece actually, so I know this to be true, is a few centimeters on the inside of the left arm. In other words, it's really out of view. It's just a soft rounded form without too much information present, which makes it really easy to retouch later down the line. So while certainly not ideal, it's not the end of the world. We all make mistakes from time to time. When it comes to mold making, it's impossible not to. But the most important thing when making mistakes is taking note of said mistake and figure out a way to correct said mistake in the next mold and ideally, if you can, in the next casting of the same piece. There's always something that you can do to help yourself get a better cast with less issues in your mold. The silicone folds away and you should take care when doing so. There are some things to know here. Do not let the weight of a silicone piece this large go unsupported. It can tear under its own weight or it's more likely to tear under its own weight rather. This would obviously be really bad if it were to happen. I do prefer to work from the bottom heading upwards since the bottom of this piece is open and then along the seams, slowly loosening up the silicone skin from the surface as I go. For the front half of silicone, it's really important to work from the bottom up. Most of the undercuts present on the face, the inside of the nostrils, the underside of the brow ridge, even below the upper eyelids, these are areas that are much easier to release if you are pulling the silicone downwards compared to upwards. So we have to be extra careful since we are doing kind of the opposite. The reason we are doing it the opposite way is because we have the crown present here, which really forces us to work upwards, because there's no way we can get the silicone off the top of the crown without it coming from the bottom up. You have to be really careful about the ears and attempt to release those before attempting to release the silicone from the face itself, otherwise you'll pull the ears off. The ears are best released from the back towards the front. Try to pull the silicone back a little bit to get some space to move around the back of the ears. Once you've gotten the back of the ears released, it should be easy breezy. 